I want to talk to you about Mrs. Davis. This I want to talk about it. Okay, well, let's get started. So why don't you tell me about how you got involved in the project and tell me a little bit about the show. Well, I th think my favorite thing about the show is how difficult it is to describe the show. Uh, it was that way while we were shooting. It was that way when the audition came through. Like every time you get an audition for something, there's you know a breakdown of the character and a breakdown of the log line. And this log line was uncharacteristic uncharacteristically bare for the script that you know followed um you know your basic ai is taken on by a nun who kicks ass is already crazy and weird enough but when you actually get into it i think betty's coined the term no country for old looney tunes and i feel like it sounds like a mad libs exercise that's spun out of control a little bit so like one of the things about it that's really you know kind of the charm of the show is how hard it is to describe the show. There's so many different genres that it weaves in and out of, and so many different kind of unexpected characters and unexpected takes um, that make it really just like unflinchingly original, which I've been doing this for 20 years. I think Betty and I have been doing this about the same time. And when something like that comes along, it's always, you know, yeah, you feel like you'd be so lucky to be a part of it because it's just, uncomparable to anything you've done before. So I had worked with Damon, Betty had worked with Damon, she did the hunt with Damon, I did Watchmen with Damon. So there was a connection there. Uh, and I've been saying like when the audition first came through, I was kind of like, oh, I'm really gonna like this. It's really gonna hurt when I don't get this. And then I read the script that Tara and Damon wrote and was like, love this, it's really gonna hurt when I don't get this. It took me like, typically i think an audition tape you know that you ask a friend to help you with takes like an hour maybe two hours this took me like three days because i just wanted to get it right yeah. and there was so much specific comedy and like specific tone um that you know you could lean too far one way or the other you could play it too straight or play it too over the top and like really just trying to get on board with the rhythm of the scenes was a fun challenge and it took me three days i had a friend try the tape with me one day and i had to quit because i was like i'm not getting it and then my poor sister uh stuck with me for two more days after that to like really get it you know good enough that i felt i could send it over to damon and tara and at that point i had done the material so many times in a row over and over and over and over uh, i was really ready to go for the callback and that was it. I mean, it's, yeah. Like, I think originally I had a couple of scenes from our first and second episode with no context other than the scenes. And I had to like beg for a script because it was so, you, you couldn't tell whether it was gonna be, you know, slapstick or it was gonna be a sci-fi or it was gonna be adventure or a drama. There was so many potential avenues to choose from with your performance that getting a script kind of filled in those blanks, even though you realize the show does kind of oscillate wildly between all those things. Um, totally. There are parts that, you know, it is deadly serious. Uh, and then there's parts where it's as funny as it is serious. So, you know, it was, it's, it's something that's been definitely one of my favorite things to be a part of. That's incredible. Can you tell me a little bit about your character, Wiley, and how, you know, you approached playing him? And if there's anything specific that really drew you to him as a character? Yeah, Wiley, I think, it, it, you know, he's Simone's, uh, Betty's character's ex-boyfriend. Um, you find out that, you know, they had a relationship. They've been separated for a long time. He used to ride bulls in the rodeo. And now he's the leader of an underground resistance, also trying to take down Mrs. Davis, which is the, you know, omnipresent AI um, of the show. Uh, so already that's a lot to unpack and like a lot of different characters in one. You know, you've got the like spurned ex, you've got a cowboy, you've got the leader of a post-apocalyptic resistance. So just on its face, it was a lot of fun, you know, ropes reinvented uh, to kind of go after. But the thing I think that I felt was really special about him and, and Wiley's relationship with Simone was, you know, he 
you, you get to play with the idea that Wiley thinks that he's kind of the lead character of this show. And we've seen lead characters like him all the time. You know, like every Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones, you know, just scruffy kind of, you know, leading man that's, you know, gonna, gonna win the day is who he thinks he is in his mind. And not only is he constantly reminded that he's not, but the, in fact, heroine of the story is his ex, which adds even more friction that's funny between the two of, two of them. And because AI deals in kind of um, cliches, you know, they, uh, AI will accumulate kind of every known cliche and then spit back out in a way what you expect it to hear. Um, our show kind of plays with that. So, you know, as we move from genre to genre, you know, whether it be sci-fi or rom-com or flat out comedy or a drama, um, you know, those kind of hero's journeys between Simone versus Wiley and whose story is it, um, they get to play on those cliches as much as AI kind of would. Um, so that's really great. I think the first, you know, because of all that, because he's kind of like wants to present as a leading man, but is in fact this kind of insecure mess. Some of like we had talked about, uh, like Nicolas Cage from Raising Arizona. Um, and uh, it's like an inspiration or a jumping off point. Um, there was a time where he had an accent and we decided no accent. So he went through a lot of iterations, but the whole show, you know, not just with character development, but even the sets and the set pieces and costumes were all such a team effort to kind of collaborate this like patchwork of what our show's vibe is. Like I've never worked so closely with a costume designer like Susie Cotard and, and um, you know, our, our set designer, Emma, and then our director of our first two episodes, Owen, oh, like everybody, Alethea was a director, the director, our other like homeroom director. Everybody kind of had a hand cast and crew together and like whittling down what the show looks like, what the show feels like based on Taryn Damon's, you know, script, which was just a crazy springboard, so. Totally. I, I personally am really curious to see how, you know, they went from being a couple, Simone and Wiley to, and now she's a nun. I'm yeah. very, very curious. I'm very intrigued yes. um, just from seeing the trailer and, and yeah. her seeing him with the mustache and what's with the, you know, so yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, right. It's, it's yeah. very, very intriguing right off the bat. Just, just from that relationship standpoint, of course, the whole who Mrs. Davis is, is also very, very intriguing, but just thought yeah. I would uh, yeah. say that. I, it's great. I mean, all those answers are answered like so you know every kind of there's a lot of i mean like mrs davis part of the thing is that it's got like mcguffin after mcguffin after mcguffin after mcguffin but we circle back and really do hit answers to all those questions that get raised as we you know kind of you make your way through the eight episodes um so yeah no i'm glad i'm glad because you know that is something that pretty early on in the season you know the show addresses that's awesome. Did you do any type of AI prep for your you character? Know, not, not, not really. I mean, like the, the AI in the show was clearly so far advanced from anything. Uh, well, until recently, <laughs> um, anything that like I had heard of or felt that I needed to hear of. And it, and it had such a specific tone that, you know, the scripts were, were really enough there. I know Tara and Damon did an incredible amount of research to come up with their version of what you know, a near future, all universe, all encompassing, all knowing, all benevolent AI would be. But as far as uh, my research, no, I didn't really have to do to do much there. Um, but it is insane. I mean, uh, it's actually kind of eerie how much because of the recent, you know, being chatbot, chat GPT, whatever it is, has now not only, you know, entered the zeitgeist in a, in a, in a huge way right before our show comes out, but, you know, has trickles of nefarious, you know, inclinations kind of like you think early operating systems of Miss Davis might, you know, totally. Um, it makes it fun to talk about and it makes it, you know, really eerie in a cool way. 
Would you say on that note that, you know, there's any themes or messaging in the show that you kind of might want audiences to take away from? I mean, there are outside of even the AI, there's an incredible amount of themes and, and messages, you know, parental relationships, you know, um, relationships with faith versus technology kind of. I think, you know, one thing that our show does do that I, I would say before people watch it is kind of interesting without spoiling anything is it does talk about how, you know, faith, where is faith's role in a society um, when you have something tangible that is actually all knowing and can improve your life, you know, in ways that previously probably only religion could, you know, come close to the belief that there was a higher power, the faith that there was a higher power to get you through, you know, pressing times. Now there's evidence, you don't really need faith, that there is something smarter and bigger and all knowing. And so from the perspective of a nun, or even, you know, our show has a lot of magic in it. And the origins of that you find out pretty early in the um, season two, but even like, you know, magic or chance or luck or mystery, all of that is, you know, for a greater good, no longer as relevant in society and this, the resistance all the different kind of teens of the resistance whether they're nuns or wiley's camp or other people you meet that's kind of the uh the battle cry is that this this thing has now mutated our faith and our ability to believe in magic um magic literally magic figuratively. i'm so excited to watch it i have to say can you tell me what if there was, what the most challenging aspect of filming was, whether it be physical, was there any Probably challenging thing? Just the scope. I mean, honestly, everyone involved in this, from PAs to top brass, were given a, an enormous sandbox to play. It's a testament to Tara and Damon. It's a testament to Peacock and Warner Brothers. Everybody wanted to give this show as much space as they could to bring the scripts, which were easily the most ambitious scripts I've ever read, to life and do them justice. So I think there are probably challenges that would eclipse most TV shows, especially in a first season, that the writers, that Tara, our showrunner, our producers, our directors had to, you know, go through in order to make this thing as big and as full as it appeared on the page. But as far as me and Betty, I think I can safely say for both of us, it was a joy. A That's day. awesome. Um, That's awesome. So, yeah, whatever, whatever battles they had to fight to make it that way, I guarantee you they existed, but not at the expense of production because we really felt like we lived there, we loved there, and would stay there as long as they'd have us. That's amazing. What was it like working with the rest of the cast and crew? It sounds like it was a really really tighten it set and and you guys just had a blast yeah i mean it's ideal it's 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 rare that you get one of these that you know i've been part of projects before that have really kick-ass scripts and and you read them and they come alive and for a million different reasons you know it just doesn't quite come together the way you feel like, like it should have um and this is kind of an exception where it seems like the entire team that they brought together was on the same page of like, if this is going to work, we all have to swing big. That was true for our cast. Everybody had to, everybody that was put on the show understood to come out swinging and, you know, you know, swing to the fences. And, and um, that was true for the crew, um, our props department, our ward. I mean, every, I could name literally everybody and somebody like brought their own brand of weird to like kind of collage this thing. And it was a safe place to do it. You know, Tara and Damon. Damon, I've worked with him. This is my second time to work with him. Watchmen felt that way. This felt that way. But everybody just really seemed to understand that, like, if this was going to work, we should all have a hell of a lot of fun with it. As far as, you know, I mean, cast, we just really lucked out. I mean, I am, uh, Betty Gilpin is a genius and I love every second I get to share the screen with her but that's true for the entire cast top to bottom most of my work was with Betty but uh, I mean I could I could sit here and bore you to tears bragging about every single member of our cast <laughs> I love that you've worked on 
lots of TV shows, lots of films throughout your career. And now you're doing this one, which is kind of, I guess, I guess you could say it's like sci-fi and you, I know you did Limitless as well. Mm -hmm. Would you say that this is very, very different from any other project that you've been a part of? Yes. And that's sure. why, that's why I you mean, really, really like wanted to be a part of it. I mean, no, there's a, I mean, I'm so proud of Limitless. I'm proud of, you know, uh, almost everything that I've, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years. And, and even, you know, you go back as far as when I started when I was 16, like I'm, I'm proud of my work and the work of the people that I worked with. Uh, so, you know, yeah, the culmination of two decades to kind of get to a show. You know, I, I have to quote her on this. She said this, I think, at um, South by Southwest, but um, Betty made a great point. We're so often, because you have such little agency as an actor, uh, especially when you're starting out, what projects you work on, what characters you get to do, that usually it feels like a show is asking you for 10% of what you can do, what you feel like you can do. And this is probably the first time I feel like all of us have been asked to do 110. You know, um, and that's Betty. That's Betty's point. It was a really, I really feel like that's true. So, Limitless is definitely up there, and there are a lot of similarities, um, you know, that I could point to between aspects of Mrs. Davis and Limitless. But um, Mrs. Davis is far and away uh, different than anything I've ever done. It's really different cool. than I've seen. Yeah. No, I, I. I, I'm telling you, and I'm not just saying this, I saw the trailer and I was immediately like, oh, wow, this looks yeah. very interesting. And it just looks like a big fever dream. And I'm just really stoked to to watch it. I'm, I'm going to watch it when it comes out. I'm I promise. So happy to hear that. Yeah, we, we, we're really, really proud of it. Um, we, we, we love it. I think your description's apt and it continues being like that. And it really crescendos for eight episodes. We screened awesome. the first two at... South by Southwest, and and they have a lot, you know, in in those. But we were kind of like, and these are the normal ones. Like it really takes off as you get deeper and deeper and deeper into the season. Well, fingers crossed that you know maybe if if it does really well, we'll get a second season or something like that. I know that's obviously maybe it's too early to say that, but. Um, from what you're so. saying, say it all you want. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't know. From from just from looking at it and from what I'm hearing from you, um, it, it sounds like it sounds like that could be a possibility, which is very very exciting for you. So I'm definitely going to uh, keep my fingers crossed there for you because I can just see you know the excitement and the passion just in your eyes talking about it. So that's cool. really really cool and exciting. Now I want to know what is the most important lesson that you have learned as an actor? You've been acting for years. Oh man, um, let me think about that for a second. Uh, the most important lesson. Ay, ay, ay. It's so easy to sound so pretentious. I'm trying to... <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, <laughs> you don't, I mean, feel, I guess, whatever you know, comes in your head. There's, there's a million different things that people probably way more qualified could say to answer it. But like one of the things that I, I learned was to really just love the process and don't worry about the result. Um, I know it's not like an acting lesson. It's not like something you would, you know, think about on set in the middle of a scene or anything. But I, I know that, you know, it's really hard to, you know, kind of parse apart your expectations um, for the for the making of something versus the result of making of something. And I think I've found more joy and better results the more I try to divorce myself from the result. Um, and just really enjoy the actual acting of it. The, the, the kind of connection that you make on set, the connection you make in a scene, just the whole entire process start to finish. That's the special part. That should be why you're doing it um, because obviously the result is completely out of anyone's control. And yes, you want it to do well so that everybody's hard work um, can be appreciated, but really, the only thing I think that matters is that you put all your uh, intention and focus in, in the doing of it. And everything out after that is, is kind of out of your hands. Totally. I think that's actually really good advice just for anyone like doing anything, yeah. to be honest. So that's yeah. that's really, really cool. You know, going back to the AI element of Mrs. Davis, what are your thoughts kind of 
you know, without giving anything away, sure. what are your thoughts on the topic and, and the world? Of AI? Yes. Or of Mrs. Davis specifically? Well, well, let's, let's kind of relate it to the real world, but without giving me any spoilers, of course. Oh, well, no, yeah, I mean, I don't, I have no idea. I'm sure there's, I mean, show aside, I, I'm sure there are things that we do, people, that could probably be done better by AI. Don't know what they are. Uh, I'm an actor. <laughs> but <laughs> like, but it, it, do, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I, I it's... It's a weird thing. It's it's a it's a I think you know any great mind that has thought about it uh, seems to be wary of it, and so that's something that seems like you know advice to heed, but and and in the same in the same way it kind of feels like inevitable that it's around more, and totally it keeps you know perfected and and you know uh, starts to. You know, imbue society in different ways. I think I don't know. I'm so unqualified. I hate to be an actor adding. No, that's okay. No. I just I just was curious, you know, because uh, it, it kind of even just seeing the trailer, it makes you think, right? Totally. I mean, look, there's undeniably in our show with our make believe algorithm parts of society that have been radically enhanced for the better from from a societal point of view all the way down to an individual. Point of view. So. That is undeniable and hard to reconcile turning it off. But these characters that we follow have their reasons. Those reasons are valid. And that's kind of the impasse that the show, you know, in its own wacky way, <laughs> tackles is like, does the, you know, does the end, does, does the end justify the means? Like, yes, sure, all these things are, you know, true, but all these things are better and also true. So who are totally. you to say no? Totally. If you could describe the show in one word, what would you describe it as or is? <laughs> Microdose. Cool. <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe just dose. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Psilocybin. Cool. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, yeah, I, I, that's, that's tough. That's, that's really tough. Well, I said fever dream earlier, right? So fever dream's good. I mean, there's no, you honestly could say anything and you'd be like, yeah, I had, I never post on social media. I've just gotten old. Um, and I posted the trailer for this show and was trying to come up with an apt caption for the trailer and the show. And so I just was like, I'll just do it in emojis. I'll just put like three emojis, like a robot, a church and you know a cowboy or something I, I was gonna say the cowboy yeah and then by the time i posted it there was like 16 emojis it was just like well there's this and then there's also this and there's also this and then in episode five there's this and so you know it just it just seems like an explosion at the emoji factory i love it now is there anything else that you can tease us about the show or you want to say i think our trailer did a pretty good job and i'm and i honestly don't want to be Shot in the neck with a dart right now for saying the wrong thing by Damon or, or, or all good. No, all good, all good. We yeah. we will wait to watch the show to 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 get the real scoop there. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I know that I know you can't spoil anything. There's a lot of the show that wasn't in the trailer, which is insane because the trailer is packed with stuff. Um, and just know that that's how each script felt too. Totally. Well, when the first the first time I uh, watched the trailer. I was confused and I was like, who's Mrs. Davis? And then I got it. And I've seen a couple different trailers that um, like, she wants to talk to you. She wants to talk to you. Right. So yeah. it's very, very intriguing, but it took me a second to, to realize that she is like the Siri or the, the yeah. AI. Right. Yes. She's a Scarlett Johansson from her became God. Yes. Um, and yeah, I know that first teaser was kind of, that was like an in world ad for the app, Mrs. Davis, almost. Totally, I love it. Um, lastly, I wanted to know if there's anything else that we can expect from you in the future. Um, you know, I, this is an uh, one of the best things about this show is it, 
I, I was, it just was such a good experience that I feel like I needed to take a little bit of a break for a while. And I'm doing that. So I'm about to gear up and start, you know, going after things again. But we finished shooting Mrs. Davis in Spain. We did a month in Barcelona. So scattered throughout, you know, our season, there's a lot of scenes that took place abroad. And when we finished that, my like best friend from childhood flew out and we just took a road trip for um, another month um, just to kind of see the northern coast of Spain and to kind of decompress. This was right before the holidays. And it was really good. It was like one of the best kind of gifts that Mrs. Davis could give me was it felt like, okay, that was a really great experience. And for a minute, you can kind of catch your breath because this industry has, I'm sure many industries in our country have this, where you just feel like you can't stop. And and at, and at a certain point, you know, it's just disorienting and it can kind of be maybe not healthy. Uh, and, and, and having such a good experience on the show with everybody kind of gave me a minute to be like, let's, that's a great note to take a pause. I'll be right back and just kind of be for a minute. Um, good for you. Uh, yeah, it was nice. Um, I'm working on my uh, house here, and that's taken, that's been a project, so it's allowed me to just focus on that and try to get that done. But but you know the answer is not really, not not right now. Just really cool. this, and it feels nice to have kind of all my yeah, on. totally. Are you in LA? I just got back yesterday. Yeah, I, we cool. we were in South by we were in Austin for South by Southwest, and then I just went to New York for a few days to see my sister and her wife and some of my friends out there. Uh, and I just got back, and I'll be here until. the very nice. I wanted to say to you, Aquamarine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I, I love that, that I haven't, I didn't, because at the time, I don't, it wasn't, it was not like some, you know, box office success. I, and, and now that it's, I think the people that watched it, that it was like, you know, age appropriate for at the time, now that we're all, we're all, now that they're all, I'm old, but now that they're all like, Adults, it's having like a, it's having a moment. I'm very happy for the success Aquamarine, you know, is having or has had, you know, that way when it came out, whether it was on DVD or maybe VHS or whatever back then. But yeah, no, it's great. That was like my first, that was my first movie. Like, and it shot in Australia and it was an insane amount of fun. And so the fact that it's getting this, kind of, you know, nostalgic love is, is. Nice. Well, can I just tell you, I remember, so I, I of course watched it and I mean, I, I actually watched it not long ago too, cause it's on um, Crave in Canada, uh, which okay. is like our H it's connected to HBO max. Oh, okay. so it's actually yeah. on there. And I watched it and I remember being, you know, a little, I was probably 13 at the time thinking like, Whoa, you know, this handsome guy, like he's so nice. His character is actually a good guy for once, you know? Right, and it was right. so refreshing to have, you know, your handsome character being actually a nice person. So, totally. um, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. yeah. Yeah, totally ga gave me hope, you know? <laughs> well, and it was a little bit like, I mean, you know, they had like, this is what was so cool about Frozen is in Frozen, you know, you have this kind of love interest, but you find out that it's, it's the friendship between the sisters that's really the powerful. You don't need totally. romance necessarily to have self-empowerment you know it's, and that was kind of you know what aquamarine was about like Ma, the, the lifeguard was there and he was good and he was the love interest for um aquamarine but i can't believe i'm talking about this in my <laughs> it's okay <laughs> but, I don't... <laughs> but, and honestly look i didn't know that at the time i was 19 but like looking back on it like, like you're saying like it, it kind that was kind of the the thing like he that character was able to be written and, and ex exist as like kind of a genuinely nice guy he didn't it, at the end of the day his involvement wasn't where the power came from it was between you know the two best friends and them you know uniting to help this third person fish totally well you're you're in i'm telling you you're in um at least for my generation like that is a cult classic like that is up with lizzie mcguire the movie so uh -huh. I just I really, wanted to share that with you. <laughs> thank you. I love. I really love it. It's really sweet, and I and I and I really it makes me very happy for everybody. That's amazing. We're yeah. we're just really excited for you though, and can't thank wait to you. check out the show. Okay, enjoy the rest thank of your day. You. All right, you take care.
Bye. Bye.